one thing I like about your story is that uh, you don't, you're not afraid to tell it. Right. You know, so that's that's one thing that's good. Uh, did it, let me see. Did, do anything. did that do anything at all? I yeah. want to put. Yeah. Oh yeah. Shining. Okay. Yeah, that's better. That's better. But uh, they cool. Yeah, you good. Crystal clear. <laughs> you still playing with it. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Either way, I like the way because you're not afraid to tell your story or talk about it. So. That's why I mean, you're not afraid to talk about how many times you've been married. You're not afraid to talk about how uh, just any, you know, the struggles you may have dealt with. So I want to make this segment about, uh, I guess we can call it from the dust. Oh, I like that. You like that? <laughs> from the dust. I like that. Yeah, from the, you know, from the dust, you know, from the dust, you're able to do so many different things. People think when you're so down, like your boy Les Brown say, if you yeah. fall, fall on your back, because at least you can look up. You can get up. That's right. You know, at least you can exact. So, and then, um, so that's what I wanted to talk about. And just, so these conversations, I don't know if you ever watched any of these interviews before. It's just me just conversating with you like we normally would if we were just talking with each other. Sure. And uh, and I like the fact that now we're, you know, since we're we're doing this virtual, this is a new right. opportunity for me where I can do this and have my little backdrop, but I don't have to worry about going somewhere and see them in person. Right. Which I do. Right. Uh, but this is a good time where we can connect. So you cool with that? I am cool with that. I am. So All now right. I'm looking at the camera because, I, you know, the funny thing about this, when you do the virtual thing, is like, where do I look? Right. Uh -huh. So I, I try to look at the camera because that will, of course, mean that I'm looking at the audience. OK, good. Because I'm looking at this computer. I'm just you looking know? at your face. <laughs> look, at I'm, I'm, I look at the camera. <laughs> look at the camera. Yeah. Oh, now I'm just looking at this dot. That's, just look at the dot. Look a little bit above it, right? Uh -huh. Now I look like I'm just looking at the wall. <laughs> like I'm like I'm just lost in space. Look where you want to look, man. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. So okay. look, hey, let's get started. You ready to get started? I'm ready. All right. Well, look, welcome to Most Moto. Mindset of Successful Thinking. Moto is short for motivation. I'm here with the lovely Valerie Priester. Thank you. But I call her AKA Dr. V. So welcome, Dr. V. I love, thank you. I love that name. I love so, it. Um, that name. So it means a lot to me. Does it mean a lot to you? It means a lot to me. You know, that's good because I like speaking things into existence. So that's what I do. I love you it. Know. But love um, it. so we're going to get to know you a little bit real quick. But I just want to welcome everybody to this um, today's segment because, look, we've been off a little bit. And, uh, you know, because last week we had a big event happen. And then, um, and then this week has been a little bit behind because we try to catch up. But I'm going to put this out regardless, just like it was on Wednesday. So today is most uh, your um, moto, moto Moment Wednesday, but it's on Thursday. All right. <laughs> but uh, and one thing about it, we were supposed to do this yesterday. But the thing is, we had a lot going on. Life, you know, everybody had the things they had to do. She's talking to folks in India across seas, you know. So <laughs> that's the great thing about when you do things, about relationship building. You meet, you meet people. You build relationships with people. And next thing you know, you start expanding your brand and who you are. So. Right. I want to get to know about Dr. We want to get to know about Dr. V. So, Dr. V, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you before we get fully into it. All right. I'm Valerie Priester, CEO and founder of Victorious Life Coaching, and I am the master coach to the coaches. So, okay. I help women coaches who want to be heart center coaches, or maybe they've been in business for three years or less and they're stuck. They don't know how to figure it out, don't know who they're supposed to coach, how they're supposed to structure their business so that they can really have a proper, profitable business instead mm -hmm. of one that you know, it's a glorified job. So I help yeah. them figure all of that out, launch their business boldly and confidently so that they can serve the people that they were called to serve. It sounds like she done said it a couple of times. I so have like this her first time. Times. <laughs> well, you know what? Look at it. Then she got a superhero stand going on right there you know, too. She's going know. to Wakanda tomorrow. But look, so my thought is this. Uh, the key thing you mentioned though, really quick, you said women. Women. Tell us about that. Tell us about that right there. Your well, concentration in women and things like that. I know you know. I know you concentrate on anyone, but you keep that. You mentioned in your platform as women. Yes, because that is my target audience, right? I have I've worked with men before, and I can help men, but I am called to women. Mm. Women have a different um, attitude, a different aura when it comes to business mm -hmm. than men. Men are more like bottom line. You know, tell me what it is. I'm oh, there's no emotion. Mm -hmm. None, right? Like, like, Michael, like Michael Blackson, I think his name said, he said, hey, I got rid of my emotions 10 years ago. Right. My gone. 
Yeah, right. I got you. Women, on the other hand, though, we operate from emotion. Yeah. So the way in which you would, you know, coach someone in their business, uh, it's different for a woman and a man. And so empathy, just, you have empathy that you would be willing to show. Yeah. 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 And I just know I'm called to women. That mm -hmm. That's who I'm called to. I, I've known that from the moment that, you know, God whispered in my ear and said, this is what you're called for. Mm -hmm. So I, mm -hmm. I know that it's women. I, I work with women. I've you know, watch their lives transform and watch them be able to, you know, do their superwoman stand too, because a lot of them don't really understand and know the power that they have within. Right. And so that's what I am just, my, my superpower is pulling out that confidence so that they can do, be, and have whatever it is that they desire. I like it. So that's, that's why I'm glad you lead into that, you know, because today's topic is going to be called From the Dust. I love it. You know, but the reason why we have Dr. V on here today is because I've heard her speak once before. And if you hear her speak in person, she's definitely going to pull you in and mm -hmm. she's going to make you feel it. And that's not without, that's without no loud speaking. It's going to be this sweet, soft, <laughs> make you go to sleep and make you just listen. And not just go to sleep bad. I'm talking about, but right. just, just soothe you in or to say, you can be better. I'm like, oh my God, I feel better already. <laughs> you know, and I'm, you know, so. And I met you at the She Is Winning Tour. I don't know if I met you before that, maybe, but... No, never. I met you at the She Is Winning Tour, and it just reminded me of that sweet aunt that just, like, you just love to be around, go <laughs> eat, at her, eat at her house and Ew. go to sleep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, I keep saying go to sleep. But the good thing is, is that I just want to... Your story, though, is so profound, and you have no problem telling it. Right. That's one of the struggles that people have to... Especially women. Yeah. They have a struggle of telling their story and how they're going to be looked at. That's right. That's They're right. afraid about how something's going to come across. And someone's like, don't look at me like that. They're afraid of right. being judged, afraid of judged. being judged. Anybody does, but especially women. Women have a different standard that many yeah. people, societal-wise, it's a different standard. You know, we don't want you to be married so many different times. We want you to have different relationships with different people. You know, uh, it's just different ideas. It's like, it's not woman-like. Right. You're but, right. Um, You're right. It's good but, to you know, hear you get to tell that. So Troy, I haven't always been in this position though. I mean, yeah. I, I was in that place where I was afraid to tell the story. I was afraid to, you know, just really be real. But what I learned in the process of building my business and in the process of really helping other people and reaching out to other people is it's our story that people resonate with. We they don't mm. resonate with the, you know, the the victorious one who has made it through. That's mm. great. And I can tell that story and say, you know, oh, yeah, I'm successful today. I have a successful business. You know, I coach millionaires. And I can tell all that all day long. But that does not resonate with someone who is still in the dust, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, with someone mm -hmm. who's trying to get out of the dust, someone that had made, you know, maybe has gone to, through two or three marriages and they can't figure out how do I bring myself to a place where I can be my best. Mm -hmm. Right. So I had to learn that the best way to attract the women that I know I'm called to help is I had to be authentic. Mm -hmm. See how she, so she, so she draws you in? See so how she draws you in? Draws you in. It's like, I have to be authentic. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going, well, tell us about it. Keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> so that's the only way that I, you know, can truly attract the women that I know I'm called to help and the women that are ready to be helped. Because, that, you know, that's the thing. If you're not ready yet, then I'm probably not the person for you. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. though you know you say I, I'm like that sweet aunt that you come over to the house and eat or whatever, mm -hmm. my clients will tell you that there's a point. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> that's 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 the that's the that's the, the yeah. double edged sword of it all. You can come in and be all sweet. I love you. You're probably gonna go yeah. get your whooping though. Yeah. <laughs> the aunt yeah. say go go pick a switch because <laughs> we gotta get out of. It. But so tell us about real quick though, in regards to. Tell us a little bit about your story about how you felt that at one time that you were in the dust. Because mm -hmm. by you being able to get to this point right. where you are, you know, as a, a businesswoman, sure. uh, but it's, it ain't always been like that. Like you said before, you had to even confidently do those things. That's right. So tell us a little bit about that time when you were there. And then you're going to tell us how we get out. Sure, sure. You know, I started, you know, a little, little Southern girl from Florida. Uh -huh. and I had this dream. I remember being a little girl and I always had a dream of being a teacher, always yeah. wanted to be a teacher. So I would like line my Barbie dolls up on the couch and I would teach them. I, I teach them about life. I teach Look them about that. math because I love math. Right. So you're doing I, this already, right? Yeah. Look at that. I'm like, OK, this is what I was called to do. I Vision. Was called to teach, Vision. Right? Vision. But through the years of growing up, you know, I was raised 
by my grandparents. My parents were divorced when I was very young, probably like five or six years old. Mm -hmm. And so my father wasn't around. My mother really even wasn't around because she was pursuing her dream of becoming a professional R&B singer. Mm. So her parents and my father's parents both raised me because we all lived in the same town. Uh And so coming up, I wasn't confident. You know, I had low self-esteem. I had daddy issues because when women don't have their father in the house, then they don't know what it looks like to be the queen. They don't know what it looks like to be treated like the queen and be the woman that you are really supposed to be, right? Well, before you go, okay, so stay right there on that. Sure. Don't lose your idea, but let's let's elaborate on that fact about the father being in the house, but it's the difference between the father being there and then yeah. the father actually being there. That's right. That's right. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because, you know, people can say, hey, I grew up my dad in the house, but he was never there work. He lived there. Reason. But he wasn't there. Mm-hmm. So, so tell us a little bit right there about the emotional part of it, though. Sure. Because, I, I mean, that happens for women because we're looking for the, we learn from the opposite sex. Yeah. Right? Your children learn from the opposite sex. Mm-hmm. So your daughter will learn from you how mm-hmm. she should be treated. She'll learn from you what it feels like to be loved as a woman. Mm-hmm. She'll learn from you what the standard of a man is. Mm-hmm. Right. And when that when that's not there, then what happens is that daughter will always be seeking love. Yeah, always. And that was me always seeking love in the wrong places, the wrong way. Right. Because I didn't have that father figure to show me what it meant for someone to truly value me. Mm -hmm. Your as a as a woman, we get our value and our worth from our fathers. Mm -hmm. And a father that's there, that's there emotionally, not just there because he lived there. Totally. You know, we we don't met we don't met people that got fathers over there and they just went worse off than anyone else. Exactly. Exactly. You, know, you gotta be there right, present. Right. Yes, you gotta there you go. Present in the moment and really interacting with that child to be able to show her, you know, what her worth is. Mm. I mean, think about that. If a woman doesn't have worth, if she's not given that worth from the very beginning, then when you go out and as you start to look for relationship and look for, you know, love and companionship from the opposite sex, you're going to look for it in, in a way that doesn't really value you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Mainly we, we start to think that love equates to sex. Yeah. Now you right? go, we're going to get that. We want to get, we're going to touch it. <laughs> it is not, because, right? because, because that's where, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. We look for that because to me, to us, when we're in that place and we didn't have that, that connection with our father and we weren't taught what our worth is by our father, mm-hmm. then the only thing closest to that is sex. Yeah. So yeah. what you look for then is someone who desires you sexually. Right, 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 right. And right, you right. make that your worth. If uh-huh. I'm not desired sexually, then obviously I'm not worthy or uh-huh. I don't have any value. Yeah. Right? So, you went, so you went through the self, low self-esteem part. Yes. You know, and you yeah. went through the, like you just not understand your value. Yes. So you were in the dust of that part. Yes. And that's exactly. when you started to be there. Yes. So then you exactly. start realizing what? You know, it, it took me, this is third, marriage number three, right? Okay. You know, like I tell my story, I tell my yeah. story. This is marriage number three. But through that journey, I, you know, I don't think that I really came to value and love myself until I was probably like 37, 38 years old. Mm. Right. And so through that journey, my first husband was my daughter's father. He was my like high school sweetheart, you know, and, and I thought, oh, my goodness, we're going to be together for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. It didn't work out that way because, again, I didn't love me. I didn't value me. Mm-hmm. It was all about fight, trying to find something, someone to value and love me. And he right. was you know, my first husband. So and then another thing, too, I think we were too young mm-hmm. to really engage in what what should be marriage. Right. Right. So went through that process. And then my second marriage, you know, got married for crazy reason. Crazy reason. What reason is that? If you might oh, share with that crazy reason. What was that you. crazy reason about? <laughs> crazy reason. Okay. Um, was dating this guy and his family, you know, kept saying, oh, he's, he'll never marry you. Well, I said no. Oh, so you was challenged. Oh, I was challenged. Are you like, okay, oh, oh, he wouldn't. Okay, got you. Okay. I did a superwoman stand. Uh-huh, you know, uh-huh. no, he's gonna marry me. Uh huh. Right? Uh huh. Got it. Got it. Got it. So of course I got what I asked for. Mm-hmm. But that wasn't the person for me. It wasn't mm-hmm. even the marriage man. And nothing wrong with him. He was. He's a wonderful man. He's still a wonderful man to this day. 
but mm-hmm. I knew going in that this wasn't for me. I was just doing that to prove a point to his family. How crazy is that? Mm. But, what, but people, not just women, people do it all the time, though, right? Oh, they get in relationships yeah. because, you know, or they get married because they may have had a child together. Yes. Which may not be in the proper need. Right. Or they get in a relationship because, you know, they, uh, he made me smile. Right. Right. She made me laugh or whatever. So people you they get married, they know from the beginning this is not gonna work. It's not gonna work. And they start getting in the dust really quick. Really. really okay. Quick. So after those two marriages, you know, I, now I'm in the dust. Yeah. And and I'm beginning to think that, wow, is it me? Is something wrong with me? You know, what's going on with me that I can't, number one, I can't keep a marriage and can't keep a decent relationship. Mm-hmm. So what's what is it about me that keeps me from doing that? So that's when I started my journey of really going in going inward mm-hmm. because we, so many times we try to find and solve our problem try to find the answer outwardly mm-hmm. but it's not out there it's inwardly yeah that's where all the issues and all the stuff starts is within it's about what you think about yourself what you feel about yourself you know now i was reading your book oh you were <laughs> oh, did you read it i, I haven't read? finished yet but I'm what do you reading. think about it oh i love it i love okay. it because it really touches me it really talks a lot about you know, what I believe, what I stand for. And, and I really, really, really resonate with that. Good. So you talked about, you know, how you feel about yourself mm-hmm. is the key. Mm-hmm. So if, if I'm feeling like I'm not worthy and I'm feeling like I don't have value, then that's what I present to the world. Because now, so now we, we talk about relationships in, in, a, in an intimate relationship. Right. You know, how does that translate into business work? Same thing. When, when it comes right. down to, you know, you're how you manage yourself in regards right. to people that you know outside of the relationship. Yeah, yeah. you play small. Yeah. You don't value yourself. Right. So you play small. You feel like you're not worth, right, what you should be charging, and you're afraid to charge that mm. because you don't have value in yourself. Like that. You don't have worth in yourself, so you can never charge what you're worth. Mm. You can never charge what the value is worth that you deliver because you're not starting from the root of it, which mm. is what value do you place on yourself? Yeah. Right. What worth do you place on yourself? If 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 I don't feel that I'm worthy or value or I don't deliver value to my clients, then I can never play at the level that I should really be playing at. So you can change someone else's life, but most of all, you got to change yourself first. You got to start with you. You every day. And in every situation, no matter what the relationship is, if it's a personal relationship, if it's a family relationship, if it's a business relationship, Mm -hmm. you have got to start with you. Yeah. You got to understand who you are. You got to dig deep to know your value and your worth and be willing to stand up to that. Mm-hmm. And not let anyone or anything tell you that you're less than that. Mm. Right? I had an aunt that that's all she ever did. She always criticized me. That was another moment in the dust, right? She would always say you're never going to, you know, be smart enough to do anything and and I made the mistake and shared my dream with her. I, you know, can't share your dream with everybody. Mm-hmm. Right? Like Joseph. Joe, you can't do what Joseph did. Can't. You be down in the pit. In the pit for a long time too. Yeah, yeah, so, you yeah. know, but I shared that with her because she was my aunt. I loved her and I looked up to her. And I just remember when I shared that dream with her that I wanted to own my own business that I had this, you know, vision of I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be my own boss. Mm-hmm. Own my business. And she literally laughed in my face. She literally laughed in my face. She said, you can never do that. You're not smart enough, mm. right? Um, you, you barely finished high school, which I did not graduate high school. I went back and got my GED. And it wasn't wow. until I was 38 years old that I went back and got my bachelor's degree. So, you know, in my mind, I'm listening to her words and I'm believing her words, thinking that, no, I, I can't do this. But here's how, here's how that played out for me, Troy. Okay. In the beginning, it was like fuel to me. Mm -hmm. So every time I would, you know, get a job in corporate America, I would rise to the top probably in less than three months. Mm. I was in management or leadership, right? Because I kept hearing her voice, but I kept saying to myself, nope, that's a lie. And I'm going to prove you wrong. Just like the second marriage, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to prove you wrong. I know I'm smart enough. I know I'm capable of doing these Mm -hmm. things. So in corporate America, I'd rise to the top quick, Mm. quick and always be in leadership. But then the moment I decided, you know what, I'm going after that real dream of owning my own business, right? Being my own boss. Oh, yeah. The moment I decided that, her oh, yeah. words came back and it was like a sharp dagger mm. that just, you know, constantly kept stabbing me in my heart. So what would happen was I've started many, many businesses. I've done, I've probably sold everything from 
ice cubes to <laughs> you name it, right? Uh -huh. I to, I, I'm a seller too. Uh -huh. right? so, uh -huh. Yeah. But I would have a little bit of success and then I pull back, right? Because right. every time it looked like it was going to be really successful, her voice was in my head again. Yeah. Like you're not smart enough to do this. Right. right? You, you, you can't run your own business. Nobody will buy anything from you. I kept hearing that. And it wasn't until I really got serious and said, okay, let me, let me step back, get the help that I need. So I hired a coach, right? Mm. Cause I, I believe in coaching. I'm a product of my product. I always have a coach. Mm. So I hired a business coach and that business coach actually turned out to be not only a business coach, but a spiritual coach. Mm. And she took me deep. I mean, real deep. And I started to pull out everything that was holding me back. And at the root of what was really holding me back was my aunt's words. Got it. That was because the that, And then after, after a while, Dr. V, do you think we had to oftentimes feel sorry for that person? Or do you get the chip off your store, off the chip off your shoulder? Oh, you yeah. You actually may feel bad for, like, they knew no better. They yep. don't. They and I never work. had a chip, though. I never had a chip because I still loved her. I still looked up. Oh, no, no, no. But, that, but that's no. what, look, um, C.T. Fletcher mentioned one time, this is a guy to be on the internet, and he said the best motivator in the world is the person that says you can't do it. Right, right. That's the best. I mean, like, oh, man. Yeah, so you move. You move <laughs> yeah. because, okay, I'm going to show you. But yep. when it's all said and done, you start to feel bad. I do get I there, but. Because, you know, you find out no one ever wins. Then you start thinking right. about the other person. And that's when your feelings start saying, showing that, man, I'm a person that cares about people. Right. That's right. That's right. And that's maybe, what I felt yeah. with her. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I, I begin to understand. And that just shows the level of maturity. When you mature and you come to that level, you begin to understand people. Yeah. Because that's really what it takes. You have to be able to start to understand people. Yeah. Everybody does what they feel is best at the time with the information that they have, mm -hmm. right? So my aunt, what I, what I realized was she was no different than like my grandmother sometimes would say things that were harsh and, and negative, but they didn't mean them that way. What they meant was they were trying to encourage me, but they could only do it the way that they knew how to do it. And so they were actually talked to the same way. Their parents and, and people that were around them were telling them the same thing. You'll never amount to anything or you'll be just like your mom or you'll be mm. just like your dad. That was their way of encouraging because that's all they knew, right? Wow. I can only give you what I have. So I began to understand that my aunt could only give me what she had. And that was her way of trying to encourage me not to settle for less and not to, you know, not go after something that I really, really wanted. She mm. felt if I, you know, if I say this or whatever, and I don't know what she may have been feeling because I can't, you know, I wasn't in her, but that's, that's the revelation that I got later on is that she did the best she could do with what she knew at the time. You, you've seen Color Purple, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Mr. Miss. Doing what he do. <laughs> but look, when Goldberg finally stood up to him and did that right there. Yes, that was it. That was that, it. That, but when she that did that right it. there, but guess what? In that moment when she stood up. Yes. Yes. Then he started realizing. Yeah. Maybe I'm doing this wrong. Mm hmm Yeah. But then you listen to his daddy who was there all the time. Yeah. And then you look at him and say, that's what he was doing. That's right. So like my dad, I love my daddy to death. Yeah. My dad has a lot of kids, right? Oh, and we're from the same family that way. way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I always try my best to be around him no matter what. Yeah. I just want to have that validation of just, mm -hmm. that's my daddy. That's my dad. But I've my mom and anyone else would say, why are you so, why do you care so much? I mean, it's, yeah. as I got older, I started realizing, unfortunately, he couldn't help it. Not to give no one no excuses. No. And it's not. No excuses. But no. the fact is, is that, he learned from his daddy. That's right. That's and right. then that person learned from So your dad mm -hmm. did the same thing yes. to you yes. that he may have known. He never probably raised a daughter before. No one in his household was raising daughters. Yeah. So that stuff happened. And this. So now tell us, how did you get out of the dust? And encourage us how these women in us, period, can get out of the dust. Um, you know, the first step is getting honest. Yeah. With who you are. Mm -hmm. Right. Because a lot of times we try to hold on to the wrongs and the things that were done to us that were, you know, weren't right. And we keep trying to blame the other person. But at some point in time, you have to stand up and go, you know what? That was then. Mm -hmm. This is now. 
And my past does not have to dictate my future. My past does not have to, to you know, define who I am today. I get to choose that. So you talk about, you know, your father has a lot of kids. My father has, I think there's uh, 11 of us. Right? 11? 11. Oh, okay, my dad has right. 17, so. I know, I, you know I heard your mother say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 11 of us um, between, oh dear, probably five or six women, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I just met four of them over the last couple of years, mm -hmm. right? For years, I only knew about seven of us. Mm -hmm. But my dad would always say he had other kids, but I didn't, you know, didn't he, we didn't really get in touch with each other or anything until I asked him. I said, look, give me their names, their phone numbers, let me call them so that we can get to know each other. We're mm -hmm. sisters and brothers no matter how it happened, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So I could have been still the angry one. I, and I do have some sisters who are still very angry at my father because of his lifestyle. But you see, I have nothing to do with his lifestyle. Yeah. When he was doing whatever he was doing. And when him, him and my mother were together, when they divorced, I was a child. That had nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. So I could either hold on to that anger, which keeps me in a certain place and stuck. Mm -hmm. Or I could forgive him, number one, which I really don't even feel like I had anything to forgive him for because, again, that was his lifestyle. Right. Right. Whatever he was dealing with at that time, he had to do what he had to do with the knowledge that he had at that time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The choice I have to make as an adult and really looking at who I am is, OK, my daddy wasn't there. Right. So I, I went through some relationships that I probably could have avoided had I had the love of my father and the validation and, and him showing me that I was worthy and I was valuable, I probably would have avoided some of those relationships. But, but thank God you went through them, though, right? Because I learned a lot. You learned a lot. And then how many people that you're going to transform and help transform because you showed because up? Because of that. Exactly. Because of that. Exactly. Because of the dust. That's right. And the truth is, the dust is gone. Mm -hmm. Right? So I can, I can either choose to stay in the dust or I can come out into the clearing. Yeah. This is what I choose for my life. And that's what I did. But I had to look really deep and hard at who I am. What do I have to offer? What do I need to correct in me? Right? If there's any unforgiveness, if there's anything that I'm holding a grudge against, if there's anything that, you know, I have even done wrong to someone else, you got to clean all that up. Mm -hmm. You can't come to be your authentic self until you get clean within yourself first. Go on with it. Go on. Don't, right? don't look at me like that. I got you. <laughs> so that's the first thing. You got well, so, to be honest. So first thing was being honest. It sounds like the second thing you better say is value. You got to know your value. You got to know your value, right? Because if you don't know that, you can't operate from a place of really showing up as the valuable person that you are. Mm -hmm. So you got to learn your value. But you, you, you know, you, you got to end it off with a third one. You can't go preaching and they don't have three points. You <laughs> Number three, take preach. action. Oh, Number Doctor. Three, take action. Girl, you were, go on with it, Pastor. Take action. You go on, Dr. V. Oh, look, look, somebody else called me Pastor one time. Go on, Dr. V. <laughs> you cannot learn all of this stuff about yourself. You can't take all of the motivation that Mr. Mr. Moto himself puts out every week, mm. right? And get all that information and then just sit on and go, yeah, you know, I'm getting motivated. I'm, I got all of this and I got this information. I'm learning this, that, and the other, but what are you implementing? Mm -hmm. What are you implementing? So the, the biggest thing is you got to take action. Yeah. Because I can teach you all day long. Troy, you can teach them all day long, right? They can listen to the Les Browns. They can listen to the Lisa Nichols, anybody else out there. They can listen to them all day long. But the bottom line is after you finish listening, what's your next step? Mm. What action will you take to move you forward so that you can become the best you? Because until you become the best you, you can't help other people become mm. the best them. Go on with it. Right? So we so we we talked about being in the dust. We all been there before. Yeah. But your three ways of getting out of that dust. Because you know, I heard a guy talk about the other day. I looked at this video and he said, I'm so tired of he is a cusser. You know, so I'm so tired of effing getting motivated. I'm so tired of freaking motivation. He said, give me some, some instruction. Step. That's right. Give me some action steps so I can, so you can change my life. Exactly. But freaking motivate me. I said, wow. Give me action steps. You know, Troy, my, my um, tagline, my, my motto, you know, my saying for my company is designing your victory. Mm -hmm. right? and, and I help people do that with seven steps, right? And they represent victory, right? Number one, 
got to have a vision. Mm. Got to have a vision. If you don't have a vision of where you want to go, any place will be sufficient. Yeah, and you will perish for sure. You any will. Place, I like that. Any place, any will, be place will be sufficient. You'll just right? you'll stay right here. This is good. Right. You'll stay right here. Any place. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. 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 And you'll be comfortable in that and you'll stay right. there. So yeah. you got to have a vision. you got to know what it looks like. And when you get that vision in your mind, you've got to visualize that every single day. Mm-hmm. Not just a little, you know, passive daydreaming. I mean, visualize to the point where you're sitting in your quiet time and you're taking some time where you are visualizing what you want. You see yourself in it. You can smell it. You can feel it. You can taste it. Mm-hmm. You know what you're going to feel like emotionally when you get there. That's mm-hmm. visualizing. Mm-hmm. you got to have a vision got to have a vision number two you got to be intentional yeah it doesn't just happen it doesn't just fall out of the sky you can pray all day long if you don't take action and you're not intentional about it it won't happen there you go number three you got to have courage Mm -hmm. because it's scary right your dream is going to be scary and if it's not scary it's not big enough hey it's not big enough. I'm glad you just gave me confirmation because there's nothing easy about doing this okay. motivational stuff. Nothing no. easy about inspiring people. There's nothing easy about putting an event together, which we're going to, before we leave, we got to talk about that. Sure. But there's nothing easy about it because you start getting afraid, like, am I doing the right yes. thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and there's so many things to, to fight. Yeah. yeah you know? Look, Les Brown said the easiest thing he ever did was make a million dollars. Right. The hardest thing he ever did is believe it could happen to him. Good. That's right. Right. Go ahead. So number number four. What's so number four? Number four is um, to make sure that you're tenacious. Mm-hmm. That you're tenacious. Never give up. Mm-hmm. Never give up. Never quit. Right. And I tell people all the time because sometimes people, when they have stumbling blocks or they fall or obstacles, they think that you know, oh my goodness, well, you know, I, I've I've just failed. You have never failed until you quit. Mm-hmm. I don't care how many times you have to fall and get back up. When you say I quit, then you fail. Mm. But if you get back up, you're still in the game. Yeah, it is. Never give up. Never give up. The other one is um, the ICT. <laughs> uh, be open. Openness. Yeah. You have got to be open to different and new things. Mm-hmm. If you stay closed-minded and you just want to believe what you believe. You don't want to hear anything else. You don't want to, you know, entertain anything else. You can't make it out of that comfort zone. Right. I remember when I first heard about the law of attraction. Right. Mm-hmm. Now I'm Southern Baptist raised. So when I first heard about this law of attraction thing, right, in my mind, all I could think was, well, I don't know, that's kind of like worshiping another God and da 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 da. It's all mystical, right? Like for example, when Oprah did it to about the secret, when she oh, put it, no, and we're like, right? it's like, don't you listen to that? But then when you look at it, it's like, I believe in God. There's nothing <laughs> mystical about that. She actually was. Just encourage you to visualize what you're doing. Thank you. And it's more in a line with what the Bible says. And, and, you there you, and you know what? That's sad. Look, look the I details. You just got to know the details. Details. So you got to be open. Mm. You got to be open, right? Well, when you said, time, before, before you move on, when you said that, when you first heard the law of attraction, Southern yeah. Baptist girl, go ahead back to that with you. Oh, so, you know, my thing was, I, I can't take part in that. Yeah. Right? Because, it, it, again, it sounded like to me, we were going to be worshiping something other than the God I know. Yeah. Right. So I don't want to have any parts of that. Mm-hmm. And I tell you, Troy, I, I put it down. said, nope, not dealing with that. And it came back around probably about two or three years later. Mm-hmm. But it came from a different person in a different way. Right. And it, it started at that point to pique my curiosity, because when it came to me in that way, we were talking about mindset. And, you know, that's my number one thing. Right. So when we were talking about mindset and what you're thinking and what you're feeling and who you really believe you are, that piqued my curiosity and I dug deeper. Mm -hmm. I started digging deeper. And then that's when I really began to understand how your mind works, that whatever you're thinking about, Mm -hmm. you're creating. Yeah. Go with it. The Bible says, right, that as a man thinketh, so Mm -hmm. is he. The Bible says that there's life and death in the tongue, right? So when I started to line all of those things up, I'm like, well, wait a minute. This is really just confirming what is true. God mm-hmm. has laws of the universe that he created, and those laws stand true, whether you believe them or not. Yeah, at all. It, it don't matter if we believe it or not, it's going to still happen. It's going to still happen. You go, Look, you reap what you sow, right? Absolutely. All that stuff. Absolutely. So if you are constantly speaking negative over your life, if you're constantly complaining about what's going on in your life, guess what? You create more of that. 
Yeah. You open the way for more of that to happen. So you have more of that to complain about and more of that to, you know, be woe is me about. I learned that. So, but I, I couldn't have learned that unless I had it was an open. open mind. So you've got to be open to new things because here's the truth. You don't know everything. Not at all. You don't know <laughs> everything. You don't know half of the stuff. Period. You need to know. Mm -hmm. right? So being open. And then you have to make sure that you are ready. Yeah. You're ready. And that requires you doing the work, right? There is a preparation phase. And if you're not doing the preparation phase, then when opportunity really comes, you're not going to be ready. Mm -hmm. But you mm -hmm. must be ready. Practice makes you ready. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people I hear say, you know, I want to earn six figures. I want to be a six figure earner. And this and other. And so I ask them, are you ready for that? So naturally, they're going to quickly say, oh, yeah, yeah, because I, you know, I want that kind of money. But, well, let me ask you this. Do you have a financial plan? Mm -hmm. Would you know what to do with six figures if it landed in your lap right now? Besides spend it. Because like Jim Rohn say, I'll show you how to uh, be, how do you, can you go broke spending a million dollars? Just spend a million dollar in one. That's right. <laughs> spend That's one dollar right. more than you got. You'll be broke. You'll be broke. I've been there and done it. You'll be broke. So be ready. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is be you. There you go. I don't care what. Be you. You've got to be authentic. Mm -hmm. You've got to be who you are. You cannot emulate or imitate anybody else. you got to be willing to be you. And when you are you, because you're the best you that you can be, mm -hmm. anybody else be you but you. Mm -hmm. But when you show up as the you with the greatness that you have in you and the confidence that you have in you and you pull out the power that is existing within you, unstoppable. So that, you just, you basically just got them out the dust. Yes. You, that's, how you, that's what you live by to get yourself out the dust yes. and helping other folks get themselves out the dust by doing those three steps. We talk about four plus seven. You got 10 steps right there. You, your, your Fitbit going to be on point. You done lost all type of weight. Then. I know that's right. You're working out. There. Mentally, your Fitbit on point. So my main thing is always telling people to, you know, be careful what you feed yourself. Yeah. You got you to feed yourself positivity, encouragement, inspiration, because always. Always. there's so much out there that can help you be negative. You don't have to worry about it. Besides you telling yourself, your auntie, anyone else can help you be negative. That's right. right. But like, let's, I keep quoting Les you know Brown, you know, more in there, right? <laughs> hey, yeah. Les Brown said this, he said, like when he told that guy, that guy told him to go to the board and write whatever down. And he yeah. said, I can't do it because I'm mentally educable or whatever, retarded, whatever yeah. it may be. Yes. He said, no one's opinion yeah. of you has to be the reality. That's right. Someone's That's opinion, right. opinion of you doesn't have to be your reality. Absolutely. I told my wife that in the beginning, we first met, I said, that could be someone else. They don't have to be our story. Yeah. Yeah. Never has to be your story. You have to be your story at all. So, and that, I mean, you know, and that's the same thing about what you accept. The thoughts that come through your mind, people think that they just have to accept those thoughts and run off to the races with them. You do not. You do not have to accept every single thought that comes into your mind. Those negative thoughts, you have control over them. Take authority over them. Mm -hmm. Cast them down and you don't have to think about them. Replace them with what you want to feed your mind with. And that's listening to something positive every single day. Les Brown said you need to mm. read at least 30 pages of something positive every day. Mm. Every day. Right? This is not something that you can pick up, you know, this week and say, okay, I'm good. You know, I got all I need. And then next week you lay it down. No, no, no. This is a daily practice. A daily practice. You've got to be feeding your mind something positive. And we'll be here all night. In this we'll world, there's a whole lot of negative hey, things coming in. And with all, we will be here all day talking about this. So yeah. look, I want to. My last thing is, want to ask you, what would you like to re encourage the folks from the Most Moto community right now today? It's going to be a lot of people looking at this. You know, from your people that knows you, from the Most Moto community. What's that last thing you want to encourage them with before you go? I want to encourage you just to be brave enough to step forward. Mm. Be brave enough to step forward. Martin Luther King said you don't have to see the entire staircase to take the first step. Mm. Right? A lot of times we're looking for the, the whole picture. I want to see what the end result is going to be. Well, the end result is whatever you choose to create. But it mm. starts with one step. So don't be afraid to take the first step. Don't worry about what happens next. I was talking to a lady the other night, and Troy, you know I can go on and on, but I'm gonna just say this. I was talking to a lady the other night, and she has a cleaning business. She has a couple other businesses that she's trying to do. 
And she was saying, I'm just trying to ask God, you know, what this should look like and, and, and what I should do for the big picture. And, you know, where is this really going? I said, well, that's your problem. You're trying to ask him about the big picture, but you haven't even taken the small step, the one that's right in front of you. Yeah, go clean that one house over there. Right. Go clean that one house. One house. One house. Yeah. Take that one step. And when you take the first step, he will show up and show you the next step. That's what happened to me with even starting my coaching business. I didn't know what coaching was. I had no clue about that. Mm -hmm. But five women that I, would work, I was working with that I helped them totally transform their lives, they were the ones that said, you need to look into coaching because you have a gift. And I did. I took that one step. I went and got certified as a coach and I still didn't really know, how do I do this? What am I doing? Right? And I prayed and God was like, you know, well, God said, I called you to minister. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a whole nother story. A yeah, whole nother one. A whole nother story. But what I understood later is that ministry is in every single thing that we do. There you go. I wish you on that. It's a part of our life. It doesn't have to be in the church and behind the pulpit. It's in every single thing that we do. Mm -hmm. And that's what my business is about, too, is ministering and helping women to be their best. But I had to take the first step. And after I took the first step, God continued to show me the next and the next and the next. So I say, be brave enough to just take the first step. If you are scared, shaken, take it anyway. Mm -hmm. Take it anyway, because that's what's going to build your confidence. So how can we find Dr. V? How can Dr. we get in contact with Dr. Oh, Valerie? Go ahead. Tell how we <laughs> that. You know, Dr. V is Valerie Priester across mm -hmm. all social media. Everywhere. Valerie mm -hmm. Priester, right? Valerie Priester. Facebook. I have a group on Facebook called Victorious Living. You can find me there. Um, face, my uh, business page is Valerie Priester. And of course, my timeline is Valerie Priester. So you know what? So what we do, just need to put Valerie Priester on there. You just type that in and you'll you find it anywhere. You'll find my website is ValeriePriester.com. Everywhere. Valerie Priester. You know, so before you go, tell us about the experience at the Most Moto event on the 31st. It was amazing. It was amazing. You had some phenomenal speakers. I love every single one of them, right? Even took away the nuggets. Because here's the thing. See, we are never too big to learn. Mm -hmm. so I'm always in a position where I place myself to learn and support other mm -hmm. people. The event was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. I know June is going to be off the chain. Yeah. I'm kind of mad because I'm I won't be here. Yeah, because I was going to get you to speak at that thing. So I you know. know. But, but, so, but what was the atmosphere like for you? What would you tell someone about? If they say, tell me about this most moto. Thing. <laughs> the atmosphere was by up. you by you being there. Tell us about sure. that. Sure. The atmosphere was upbeat. It was um, motivational, of course, and it was really inspiring. It really each of the speakers gave you nuggets that, you know, you could pick up and get out the dust mm -hmm. and move on with your life. But it really was inspiring, motivating, um, really put you in a position where you felt like when I leave here, there's some things I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. That was the atmosphere that was there. There was love. There was support. Right. There's encouragement from everyone. I love the networking and getting to meet new people. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Troy, you did a wonderful job. You did a wonderful job. What's that one thing you took away from it? You said how we could take. Tell me, this is one thing you took. I away. think the one thing that I took away, you know, because I'm a, I'm the mind person, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So um, the gentleman that you had speaking about the, our body language, James. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So the one thing I took away was was really confirmation. I mean, a lot of what he taught was things that I've learned about, you know, the mind and the body and how you do. But I think it was more confirmation for me mm -hmm. that I have to always be aware of the people that I'm, I'm conversing with, the people that I'm connecting with and making sure that my mind and my attention is really on them. Mm -hmm. It's really on them. So, I, I mean, that, that was my biggest takeaway. Awesome, man. Well, Dr. V, I'm so glad we finally got to make this happen. Yes, thank you. you know, I'm thank so, you. I'm so, uh, you're a special individual to me. Uh, you're, you're, you, everything that's about you is just definitely is, is, is what you call it, oozes greatness. <laughs> Thank you. Know, you. Thank uh, you. you know, people just really feel that you change their life, man. So continue, as you say, be you. Be you. Don't change one thing about it. Mm -mm. You know, Never. continue being you. That's right. So, um, thank you all for being a part of Most Moto. Thank you all for uh, paying attention to us tonight. I know it's a, quite a bit of a long one, but there's so many different nuggets in this thing that you can really, truly take some away from it. Could make sure you definitely go follow Dr. V, Valerie Priester, on Facebook or all social media, on .com or whatever, you'll find her. 
you know, we'll put that on the screen, but you guys be blessed. Remember, the true outcome of having a mindset of successful thinking is having an unwavering expectation of successfully achieving a predetermined goal, knowing that the outcome was supposed to happen. Dr. V said it best today. Look, you can try to change someone's life today, and I encourage you to change someone's life, but most of all, change yourself. Change yourself. Y'all be good. You.